Balloons, bazookas, boob, boobies, bosoms, boulders, cans, hooters, knockers, melons, honkers, jugs, rack, tatas, tits, torpedoes, guns, bust, doorknobs, coconuts, and our favorite one, the girls. Welcome to the All About Breastfeeding Show, where your host, Lori, highlights mothers just like yourself and goes beyond the surface questions and digs deep so they share not only their joys and happiness in their daily breastfeeding life, but also their pain and struggles and how they worked through them. Episode number 217. Welcome to All About Breastfeeding, the place where the girls hang out. I am your host, Lori Jill Eisenstadt, IBCLC, which stands for International Board Certified Lactation Consultant. I help moms with breastfeeding. If you would like to find out more about how I could help you with breastfeeding, all you need to do is go to allaboutbreastfeeding.biz. There are some shows that I read word for word. The information is just so much. Some of it is a lot to remember to keep in a good timeline. And so I just type it out and read word for word. There are some shows where I make myself notes and I follow the timeline. And there are very few shows that I just mostly ad lib. And this is one of those shows. I am constantly trying to change things up, do things differently. Most importantly, push myself outside of my comfort zone. So we are just going to ad lib this show. Hope you like it. And let's see how it comes out. Today, I wanted to talk about normalizing breastfeeding. As most of you know, one of my goals for this podcast is to do all I can to normalize breastfeeding around the world. And it seems to me that normalizing breastfeeding means different things to different people as I talk to them about it. To me, normalizing breastfeeding is to do whatever I can for others to understand that breastfeeding is just another one of those things that mothers do in our daily lives. We hold and rock and sway and bounce our babies to settle them down. We kiss away their tears. In our everyday life, we're feeding our babies, changing their diapers. We're humming and singing to them nursery rhymes, and we're breastfeeding them. And we're singing them little ditties that we make up on the go. One of my favorite things to do was to put my kids in a swing and sing to them the banana song. And they each have such fond memories because this is something I would do repetitively over and over again, partly because if they were crying or fussy or if they were happy and enjoying and giggling and loving it, I just kept doing it if they were crying to help settle them down. And I kept doing it repeatedly if they were having fun and kept saying mommy again and again. For my first baby, the banana song for her went like this. Alicia, Shmisha, Bobisha, Banana, Fana, Fofisha, Fifi, Momisha, Alicia. At that time, I was renting a very small house on a huge piece of property in Massapequa, Long Island. And we had no fence around that property. But we had this huge oak tree and I had a fabulous garden and we had a fabulous playhouse. And I used to spend a lot of time with Alicia on that swing. And when she had enough of swinging, I would take her out and sit on the grass and I would breastfeed her in between tending to the garden and making dinner. I'm sure the neighbors could see me sitting there hanging out breastfeeding her, but I never really thought much of it and no one said anything to me. This was all quite normal to me. You know, I just realized if my kids ever listen to this, I don't want to leave one out. If anybody has a few kids, you probably know what I mean. So here was my banana song for Jesse. Jesse, Wessie, Bobessi, Banana, Fana, Fofessi, Fee, Fi, Mo, Messi, Jesse. Now, Jesse, he loved breastfeeding. He was my really chunky baby, and he loved to breastfeed anywhere, anytime, and I was happy to oblige. 
And for me, it was very normal for me to breastfeed him wherever I was. It was just, again, a part of my everyday life and taking care of a toddler and a new baby. And guess what? I can't leave Carly out in case she should listen to this. So for Carly's banana song, it went, Carly, Carly, Bo Barley, Banana, Fana, Fo Farley, Fee, Fi, Mo Marley, Carly. Now Carly being the third baby, she often wound up, I used to call it breastfeeding on the fly. It's not like I didn't rush my other two from time to time, but by the time I had my third baby, the other two were involved in a lot of other activities, or I was needing to get up rather quickly to to wipe them, to feed them lunch, to change them, to get them ready for something else, to play with them, and sometimes I just didn't have enough arms. So for Carly, I rushed her and I would quickly just hurry up and pick up one of her siblings at a play date, breastfeed her quickly in the car, put her back in the car seat, sometimes wait until we got home and then breastfeed her again. To me, it wasn't like this is a time when you sit down and breastfeed your baby. That's why I called it she, I was breastfeeding on the fly. To me, normalized breastfeeding means that it's just another one of those things that I did in between all of the other things that I did on any given day. Things like putting my babies in their bouncy seats, sleeping with them at night, belting them into their car seats, running with them in their strollers. In between all of these normal activities, shopping, cooking, cleaning, talking on the phone, and sandwiched between all these other things is something we just do as moms, many of us on the fly. And also, What we're doing is just feeding our babies at our breast. To me, that's normalizing breastfeeding. Now, I know there is a learning curve to breastfeeding, and especially with our first baby. And for some of us, it's a pretty steep learning curve and sometimes a very, very rough road until we get to that point of easy schmeasy breastfeeding. Now, I also know that some moms choose to not breastfeed, and that's their life. Some moms really want to, but it doesn't work out for them for one way or the other. There's no judgment here at all, at all about breastfeeding. Actually, this is exactly what I mean to say when I say normalize breastfeeding. I'd like to put breastfeeding in the same category as many things in life. There are things that some of us do, and some of us don't do because we don't want to or because we can't. There are a lot of things in my mommy life that I planned on doing, but it just didn't turn out that way. And that is normal mothering. It may shock the modern mommy to learn that many generations ago, there were times in history when breastfeeding was not in vogue, when moms gave up their babies to wet nurses to feed, sometimes for months, sometimes for years before they got their baby back. The reality is that historically, not all moms could breastfeed and not all moms wanted to breastfeed and that was very acceptable. And yet throughout all these times, it was still always normal for babies to be breastfed. Back a few seasons ago, I did about eight shows on the topic of infant feeding and wet nursing. I bundled them all together in a package, put them all on one page, and if you're interested, You can find that series by going to allaboutbreastfeeding.biz forward slash topics one. And I give you a pretty good historical view from ancient times to current times. And it's pretty interesting. In breastfeeding, try as we might, there are many things we can control and many things we can't control. It's all a part of our everyday life. Normal to me means this is just the way we do it. This is how we roll. And not everyone does everything all the same. Not all women take care of their babies the same way. Not all women breastfeed the same. Breastfeeding means something different and looks different to each of us. It's not an all or nothing kind of a thing. Above and beyond all of this to me, normalizing breastfeeding is something that we see women in all walks of life doing at any time of the day or night. In the quietness of our baby's nursery, in their chair when the rest of the household is sleeping, we're quietly nursing our baby. 
in the busyness and in the noisiness of our family room, we're nursing our baby. We're nursing our baby perhaps on the way to work, right before we leave for work, right when we pick our kiddo up, or better still, we're breastfeeding them at work. We're breastfeeding them while we're waiting in line at the store, while sipping tea at a cafe. I want to live in a world where no one, no one bats an eye, no one looks twice at a mother breastfeeding her baby, just because it's the normal part of everyday life. It's the normal rhythm of taking care of a baby in our mothering life. This is what normalizing breastfeeding means to me. So that is my mission for this All About Breastfeeding show. In season seven, we kicked it off with a fabulous interview on Monday with Esther Gallagher. She's a fellow podcaster. I had a great time. We chatted before and after the show, and we agreed that we could probably spend a whole weekend chatting and probably never come up for air. Well, Esther is the co-host with Sarah from the podcast called The Fourth Trimester. If for some crazy and unheard reason you missed that show, you got to go back and listen to episode number 216. Esther is a modern day postpartum doula and she had her first baby when she was 18. She had very little support and she brings to her work every day as a postpartum doula all that she learned from her own personal experience and all that she learns on a regular basis from helping moms in the first few months of their life after their babies are born. Once a week this season on Mondays, I will continue releasing brand new interviews with special guests each and every week. On Fridays, I will continue to release shows that are specifically educational in nature. As many of you know, I like to have themes for my shows. In season seven, our Friday shows are going to be called Breastfeeding Bites. Now, I'm spelling it B-I-T-E-S because I like to have fun. Some of you computer people are geeks. You might want to spell it B-Y-T-E-S. Doesn't matter to me. But Friday shows are going to be Breastfeeding Bites, educational shows that talk about all the many normal parts of breastfeeding. I like to highlight all the normal aspects of breastfeeding. And yes, you also know that I have a sense of humor when it comes to breastfeeding and that I love my acronyms and puns. So I thought breastfeeding bites, little pieces of breastfeeding information given to you in small little bites. This is what Friday shows are going to be all about. We will begin next week by talking about your baby's teeth. How much fun is that to kick off breastfeeding bites? You know, moms used to be told years ago that they needed to stop breastfeeding their babies when they got teeth. They used to be told that they should not breastfeed their babies at night. Yes, I swear to you, that's what moms used to be counseled to by their doctors and dentists. Can you imagine that going on now? I want to tell you right here, right now, let's just get it all out on the table. If you're new to breastfeeding or your baby does not have teeth yet, I am just going to tell you right here, right now, that you don't have to wait a week to feel anxious. You can breastfeed when your baby gets teeth. Millions of us, millions, millions, millions of us have done so. And while some babies have been known to nip our nipples here and there, most are not biting like you might be envisioning, like them chewing solid food. No, 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 that's absolutely not the way breastfeeding goes. So you will stay tuned and we will get into this topic next Friday with our first edition of Breastfeeding Bites. On a quick note before I say goodbye for today, this is a new season. Let's get as many people listening to this show as possible and boost all about breastfeeding to the top of the ratings. I frequently talk to moms, those who have worked with me, about positive affirmations, a positive mindset to close your eyes and just envision what it is you want to see happen. So I am envisioning all about breastfeeding being one of those podcasts 
that have a quick rise to the top over this next season. Oh, I'm so competitive, aren't I? Well, yes, I am. And I'm not ashamed of it because it's all for a good cause to spread the word about breastfeeding and share the beauty of all about breastfeeding. You just open up the app that you use to listen to podcasts and you got to subscribe to the show and take into account one of my most fun mantras, don't let all about breastfeeding be the best kept secret. Share the show with a friend by sending them a link to one of your favorite episodes here. You can also, if you haven't done so yet, join the Facebook group by searching these four words, All About Breastfeeding Community. Make sure you put community in it, All About Breastfeeding Community. Otherwise, another group comes up for you to join and you'll join the wrong group. So go to Facebook, search for All About Breastfeeding Community, and I look forward to seeing you in the group. Until the next show, bye-bye.